Welcome to Afros and Audio's Black History Month interview series. My name is Talib Jasir, founder and CEO of Afros and Audio Podcast Festival and the Vanguard Podcast Network. I'm excited to spotlight 29 outstanding indie podcast creators and professionals who answer the call to be a part of this series. My guest today is Gerald Davis. Welcome back and thank you for being here. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Glad to be back. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm doing well, man. Tell the people a little bit about you before we get started into the podcast. Oh, okay. Gerald Davis. I was born and raised in Harlem. I now reside in Queens. I'm a librarian by day, by night, podcaster or weekends or whatever. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Went to school in SUNY Binghamton. This was years ago and got out of there and entered the librarian world. And that's where I've been pretty much off and on ever since. Awesome, man. That's good to know. My grandmother was a librarian. My sister-in-law is a librarian at the Staten Island library. So that's dope. Long live librarians. <laughs> yes. Which comes yeah. in handy for this podcasting, but we'll talk about that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that and books, podcasting, this world, all important work to have this living record of who we are, our creativity, all that good stuff. It goes hand in hand. So talk to us a little bit about that. I'm assuming there's education involved in becoming a librarian and then you moved into podcasting world. Does it ever collide in the library space for you being able to bring podcasting into the library? Well, yes, because being a librarian, you have to be able to research and come up with the right answers. So we live in a day and age where everybody's saying any and everything, but for a librarian, you have to have the accurate information for your clients. So as far as my podcast, I kind of take that narrative with me. If I'm going to say something, I'm going to make sure I dot my I's, cross my T's, so that I'm not sounding crazy out there. Yeah, no doubt. There's a lot of that and, and a lot of theory versus researched information. So I definitely get that. Since our last conversation, how has things all basketball with GD evolved, particularly in terms of content, audience engagement, and platform expansion? What I have added since last year, I've been doing the shorts, the like little one minute clips, and that has seemed to help my podcast, to be honest. I've put it on YouTube, I put it on IG, on TikTok, and it seems to have helped as far as growing my audience. And I get a lot of feedback from those clips there. It's like the hot takes from the episode. I yeah, no doubt. Putting that into your podcast this year, was that something that you learned from somewhere else or did you yeah, kind of organically of course, yeah, just yeah, yeah. Okay. I've learned that from BPA, of course, the Black Podcasters Association. Uh, I can't remember the person who talked about it, but it was on one of those Thursday seminars that Corey Gunz puts out there and someone talked about that. I was like, yeah, th let me incorporate that. And I did it and boom, that's really helped. That's cool. What part of the workflow is that? Is that something that you kind of clip out as soon as you finish a podcast? Yeah. Or what do you what, mean? Yeah. I'll just go on audacity. I'll take a clip from it and I'll put it into video form. And then I put it out there well, with like a static picture of the yeah. person I'm talking about. It's not like me talking directly on camera. Okay, got you. That's cool, man. I'm glad that you've been able to see some growth from adding something else to the podcast and to the mix. That's important to keep progressing this thing. So that's cool that you heard that information and then applied it. That's really important. We can have a whole bunch of information and never use it. So it's, it's dope that you went indeed, there. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, yeah. So you've had some time since our last talk to implement some new ideas into your podcast, like the shorts and the audiograms. Can you share any recent projects or initiatives you've launched that were inspired by your ongoing journey in podcasting? Well, it's February, which is Black History Month. I like to do a few weekly player profiles. I did it last year. I did it with Maya Moore, John Thompson, and a few others as well. So this year, I'm going to do Wilt Chamberlain. I'm doing Alex English. 
That's the one I'm working on right now. And then Tamika Catching. I'm going to add one more little surprise one, but I think I know who it's going to be. So, All right. Awesome. Yesterday I was watching Don Staley and the Gamecocks and Ole Miss yesterday's yes. women's basketball game. Yes. So that was really dope. Yeah. And uh, Don's team took names. Yes. Um, about a week ago, they played LSU and that was a pretty good game as well. Yeah. Yeah, they're a formidable team. When I was younger, I really watched the Lady Vows a lot because I loved their coach. And um, well, I? yeah, Pat yeah, Summit, I love Pat. Summit. Absolutely, absolutely. Much respect to Pat Summit. Rest in peace. But yeah, so I really kind of came up watching that level of basketball for women. I think it was their Cinderella story. It was a documentary, and it just got me hooked. And, um, ever since then, yeah. Girls basket, women's basketball, college basketball, definitely games to watch for sure. Yeah, and I've gravitated to it this year, and it's been exciting because they have a lot of freshmen now that's coming in that's balling. Juju Watkins for USC, she's playing out of her mind right now. LSU actually has a freshman, Malaysia Williams, who's playing very well, and you have. Hannah Hidalgo, she's at Notre Dame, and she's she's playing a lot of freshmen. So it's going to be exciting the next four years in women's college basketball. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like playing ball back in the day. You didn't even want to see the, the girls coming, the, the ones that could ball for real. <laughs> You're like, Man, shit. I got stories. Here, go. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> About to get embarrassed. So, yeah. So, no, but that's dope. I love it, man. So. You wanted to start interviewing guests, which was one of your goals. Yes. Have you had the opportunity to Haven't start doing that? Haven't okay. done it yet. I would like to do that and collaborate if possible. That's something on my uh, list as well. So it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Well, I believe you and we'll, <laughs> we'll any support you need to get that moving. You just let us know. But definitely, I'm sure that the podcast will only expand and just get that much greater with some more diverse voices that you can riff off of yes. in sports. That's one of our favorite pastimes. So <laughs> I'm sure it's just going to yeah. enhance the conversation. All right, that's man. Smart. So how is your approach to utilizing technology and social media for your podcast evolve? You mentioned the shorts and the audiograms. Is there anything else that considering the dynamic nature of digital marketing and content distribution, anything that you've learned that you've actually employed this year? I've been learning about AI and I would like to incorporate that into my podcast. I just want to be more nuanced in it before I go forward with it. But AI is the latest craze now. So I would like to utilize that along with my podcast. So that's the next thing in the works. But actually, I got this side gig that I'm retiring from. Once that happens and I can put my full focus on the podcast and implementing different things. And AI is at the top of the list. Absolutely. There are a lot of different software. So a lot of times they talk blanketed about chat GBT. There, there are a lot of very niched and specific podcast related AI out in the world that can create a lot of efficiencies and support, not without the human hand on the human mind. Right. But uh, you still got to do the inputting, but what you come out with supports. It really does. If you think about me doing 29 episodes for February and dropping one every day, I didn't have AI last year. And the, the fact that I have AI this year to help with some of that efficiency, hands down, is, is a game changer. So right. for sure. <laughs> well, yeah. And the important thing with AI, it kind of streamlines what you do. But makes yeah. it easier on you. So absolutely, definitely. That's one of the reasons why I need to because I'm doing too much already right now. Yeah, I hear you, man. I I definitely uh, resonate with that. So, can you discuss any recent collaborations or community engagements that have been particularly meaningful for you and your podcasting journey? Yes, in fact, it was your function, the Afros and Audio Festival in Baltimore. I got the opportunity to work with, of course, the BPA, Black Podcasters Association, and we did all these interviews. It was great. I was behind the scenes filming all the interviews we did. And Ralph 
he was one of the interviewers as well as Shamiko, and they did an excellent job. And me, I'm type, I want to be behind the scenes, so I'll do the filming and stuff like that. I'm not doing the interviewing, <laughs> but they did an excellent job with that. So I was helping out Corey with that, and that was a fabulous experience. Of course, the whole Afros and Audio Festival itself, you learn so much there. So that's the one thing that stood out for me last year. All right, that's what's up. But I feel like we got to get you in front of the camera so that you can cut your teeth on these interviews, true, <laughs> these true, guests, man. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get you to stretch this year. So yeah, because it is dope. I'm really looking forward to hearing those and putting those out because it is one of the ways that you can kind of accelerate this opportunity to meet a lot of people and hear their story. Like we can pass each other in the hallway and sit next to each other, but the opportunity to actually listen and ask some questions whether you're witnessing it or being the interviewer, that's dope. I really am happy that you were able to have that experience there. That's yeah, cool. Very rewarding. Awesome. So in what ways do you believe your work contributes to diversifying the narrative around basketball, especially considering the importance of representation in sports media? That is a good question. I think my show is kind of different than the others. I give a different perspective, kind of like the fanish sort of perspective, but also as a person who's followed the game for years and knows the game enough to expound on things I see on the court and happenings off it. So I think I'm kind of different in that regard. And then the player profiles, I love doing those because that's where I get my feedback from a lot of people because it was like, Oh, I didn't know this about this person or this person. So that's definitely one of the keys as far as my diversity in this space. All right. That's cool. You got a mantra and you said it last year and it's uh, something that resonates with a lot of people. Don't quit. So no. do you have any additional insights or advice you've gleaned over the past year that you like to share with aspiring podcasters specifically? I would say... And actually, before I came on here today, I listened to your interview with uh, Dominic. Ooh, that was a great interview, by the way. And what I gleaned from that and what I use myself is be your authentic self. Don't try to be somebody else. Be your authentic self and make sure what you're putting out is accurate information because people will call you out when you mess up. So be accurate and be your authentic self. For sure, man. Looking ahead, what are your long-term goals for all things basketball with GD and how do you plan to achieve them? Well, monetize, monetize, monetize. That's always the goal for me, especially with me retiring from one job. So going to need a little bit more income coming in once that happens. So definitely want to monetize. That's for sure. That's on the list. And probably do some video work as well, as far as myself being on the camera, but that would require me being really prepared. So that'll be the next step. How far along that is, don't know yet, but we'll see. All right, man. Well, I I'll dare say that a lot of times we can prepare to get prepared to be prepared. Yeah. And you're probably a lot more prepared than you think you are. <laughs> so the yeah. next step is to leap and try it on. And you got folks that got your back. So, oh, um, yes. Oh, yes. So, yeah. yeah. Especially with me coming up on 200 episodes that'll be coming up soon. So, I, congratulations. I thank you. Thank you. I definitely want to do something special with that. I like to do something on video. We'll see how that goes. All right. All right. Well, we're going to hold you to it. And like I said, any support that we can give you. Just let us know, man, because that possibility is right there. Yeah, so that's what's up. All right, so we're going to close this up. Reflecting on your experiences, like with Afros and Audio and Black, and Black Podcasters Association, how have these communities supported your growth specifically, and what do you look forward to in future engagements? Well, when I started out, I just put out the content raw. I've gone to editing and cleaning that stuff up. That's been a help. And... I get my real feedback on that, how I've taken care of that. So it's that. And then, of course, just learning, 
being a sponge, try and learn this game because, you know, I'm still young in it, but trying to learn things that can help my podcast, help grow it, of course. That's always the goal. You want to grow it. You want to be like Shannon Sharp now when he blows up with the Cat Williams interview. I don't know if I get anybody on the <laughs> lines of a Cat Williams, but to get someone to be nice that can kind of blow things up, that'd be great. All right, man. Like anything is possible, man. It's all starts with that intention and the request. So anything is possible. And I I love that you have these visions and these aspirations for the podcast and that you've been understanding that you are perfecting your craft, perfecting your voice. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Building the foundation. Right. And I'm learning from others as well. I watch shows like all the smoke, those guys there, Steven Jackson, and those guys there. Also, I mentioned to you someone that I follow. They're not in the sports space, but they're like in the radio world. And we actually lost him. And that's Joe Madison. He just passed away. So sleep in power, Joe Madison, because he was a giant in the radio industry. So even watching those shows, I can learn something as far as how to deliver and how to bring out the accurate information once again. So yeah, just learning from others and just trying to take it all in and use what I can use for my benefit. Yeah, understandable. And we wish you all the best with that. As you continue to celebrate Black Voices in podcasting, what message do you want to leave with our audience about the impact and importance of platforms like yourself where representation and visibility and bringing out Accurate information, important, right? You got a lot of people to talk about sports. You got a lot of people to talk about a lot of stuff. Yes. Um, But it's a lot of opinion out there, which is great. There's space for that as well. Where do you see your place inside of the Black representation and visibility inside of sports, particularly from the podcast medium? I definitely want to be a positive influence in this space. There's a lot of people talking this and talking that, but I want to be one that's positive, uplifting. If I have a critique of somebody, it's all love. It's all love. But just want to be able to bring like a positive message out there, as well as talking about basketball, and which I love. That's my passion. So bringing that passion and bringing that positivity along with it, that that's what it's all about. All right. Well, then I have one more question for you, and then I'm going to ask you to uh, tell folks how they can find you online and social media. Is you're a Knicks fan? Yes. Would that be accurate? Wait, shout out to your wife, who's a fellow Knicks fan. I know <laughs> right, right, right. Case. Absolutely, absolutely. So, how do you continue to stay positive? Well, this year I I got a lot to be positive about. We just had a nine game winning streak. Sn- Snapped by the Lakers, who, oh, by the way, everybody was well enough to play at the Garden. LeBron and AD, but that's a whole story for another day. But, yeah, things are looking up for the Knicks. They just got OG on Anobi. There might be another trade on the horizon. I don't know about that, but we'll see. Um, Malcolm Brogdon would be nice if they were to get him. I'm not setting my sights too high, but we'll see. But they're looking good. They're third in the East right now. So it's, things are looking up for my guys. And I was That's saying awesome. this on my podcast, too, that this year is going to be kind of fluky. There's no one that's really where the cream is rising to the top. Maybe the Clippers, perhaps. But the East is shaky right now, to be honest. So anything can happen. And... This kid, Jalen Brunson, man, oh my gosh. He's the guy we've been looking for ages, and he's bringing it. So who knows what will happen? Maybe next year I'll be talking about them being a world champion. Who knows? Listen, we can all only hope. I'm a Cowboys fan, so I go from (laughs) a minute of excitement to sadness in (laughs) a matter of months. So so I get it, man. Anything else you want to talk to the people about, promote, or just let people know to look out for before I close this out? And, And again, tell people where they can find you online and social media. Yes, yes. All things basketball with GD.com. That's the website. 
I'm on YouTube, and that's all things basketball GD. I'm on Instagram, I'm on there. All things basketball with GD there, and then TikTok, all things basketball GD. That gets kind of confusing, but. <laughs> and just to look out this month, like I said, Black History Month, so I'm gonna have those player spotlights, so you could definitely check those out. Like I said, Wilt Chamberlain, Alex English, Tamika Catchings, and a surprise one that I'm going to leave for the end of the month. That's awesome, man. Well, I look forward to it. And um, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Stay right yes. there for me, all right? Yes. Philippe, uh, I just want to give you your flowers. Thank you for having me. I definitely appreciate it. And the work you're doing with Afros and Audios, man, you got my support 1,000%. I appreciate it. I really do, man. It means a lot. Thank you. So I want to give a big thanks to our Afros and Audio and Black Podcast Association members for supporting our commitment for community and collaboration. If you'd like to join the Black Podcast Association, the link will be in the description below. And if you want to join us at the sixth annual Afros and Audio Podcast Festival, visit afrosandaudio.com. Follow at Afros and Audio on all social media channels, and you can find and follow me at Talib Jasir on Instagram. Thanks again, Gerald, for being a part of Afros and Audio's Black History Month interview series. It's been a pleasure, man. Thanks for having me as always.